ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is something that excites me like crazy. What's going on everybody? Eric here from Nomadic Fanatic. It is time for another product review. I'm going to introduce you to something you may not know exists already. This is the world's smallest portable air conditioning unit for camping. This is an air conditioner, guys. This is not one of those cheap Walmart boxes that says it cools, but it doesn't. And this literally has a compressor in it. Uh, the size of this air conditioner is stated to be 2300 BTUs. So growing up when I was a kid in my bedroom window, I had a 5000 BTU air conditioner in the window. This is 2300, about half of that window size AC that I had. The rooftop air conditioner that's on my RV currently is a 13,500. This is only 2300. Again, I'm just trying to establish some context here. This is a small portable air conditioner but it does get the job done. Uh, Zero Breeze is marketing this towards outdoor camping, uh, putting it in your car, putting it in your van. Not so much in the RV industry, but that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to debunk things and tell you that guess what? This can keep you cool and comfortable in your RV if done correctly. And today I'm gonna show you how to correctly use this. Oh, did I mention it runs off a of battery? This, is one of the batteries, a battery operated air conditioner, folks. Let's see, slide this guy on like this. Locks in, it's a little heavier with that, but now it's a battery operated air conditioner. Uh, you can run it with these batteries or you can run it straight plugged into your outlet. We're gonna go test and see how much watts this thing use so you can see what it does but let me bring you a little closer and show you some specs on it. All right, so let me show you a couple things on here. We'll go ahead and turn on the battery here to get her all started up. Uh, it'll beep, and then uh, over here, you got a, you got a red light here on top that tells you it's uh, powered on, ready to go. There is one cord here that you have to plug in to there. Uh, there's also an adapter to run both batteries so that you can charge both batteries while you're also running this thing. Um, we are gonna talk about the exhaust and everything and how I have that situated inside the RV in a moment. But first, just wanna show you the front of it. Here's where the air comes out. It's all just touch. So you just touch it to turn it on. It starts in rocket mode, which is the coolest. It's really bright outside, but this dial, you can turn the fan and the cooling all the way up. And then if you look at the front there, it's at 67 degrees going down. That's the air that's coming out of this. I'm gonna stand back to also tell you that this has a built-in soft start system. So it is slowly coming up so that you can use this off the batteries and your inverter. It's not gonna have those deep discharges. It slowly turns on. We're gonna plug the watt meter in it later and check. It is definitely blowing out some nice air. It says 65, that will continue to climb even lower. So there's an intake here for air, ambient room. That's how it knows how it's doing. The back is spewing out hot air on this side. Not quite hot yet, but it will get hot. And there's another exhaust right here. Again, more on the exhaust features and stuff later. Uh, so you got, it starts up in rocket mode automatically, a little rocket. You can switch it to regular air conditioning right there with a little snowflake. Turn the fans. We're at 62 degrees there. This moves up and down. All right. That's actually, I know you can't probably even hear anything, but it's on and it'll get down. It'll get cool. We're gonna let it go for a little bit. Actually, I'm gonna put it back on rocket. I'll get back to here in a couple minutes. All right, and it just keeps dropping. It's flickering on your end, but not on mine. 59 degrees there. Oh, yeah. Bottom line, this thing flat out works. It's continuing to drop. Now it's at 57 degrees and it is some cold air coming out. I want to talk about the vent system because honestly, this review isn't complete by just showing you what it looks like without all the stuff attached to it that you have to have. So we'll start with the front. I'm going to turn it off actually. And again, it's going to slowly turn off, ramp down everything. 
All right, it's finally turned itself all the way completely off, but that's a good thing because that's gonna protect your inverters and your batteries from having big draws. It's gonna, it's gonna be easy with them. So I showed you how this goes up and down here to adjust, but what if this is sitting here because it has to be there and I'm sitting over there. How do you get cold air over to you? Well, that's why it came with this front piece. This front piece mounts on the front with an Allen wrench. So I'm gonna go ahead and secure this on there. Two Allen wrench screws on both sides. All right, and then once that's tight on there, like that, now you can simply open this up, adjust it, put it wherever you want, and have air just on you, wherever you need it. Um, I think it's an absolute must to have this. So, and I will just point out, so if you've seen any of the promotional stuff or any of the other reviews that I can find right now, people aren't showing these. They just want to show how small it is. But the problem is that's not practical to me because I always use it with everything connected, which I'm going to show you the rest of it. But again, I, I feel like this is essential. I've even had this situated making an entire U-turn like this and coming back to hit me sitting in the seat, which I'll show you in just a moment. But the back, if you buy a portable air conditioner and it doesn't have dual exhaust, like you've seen the big ones you put in your house and then it has one tube that goes out to the window. If there's only one tube, you are not gonna be very efficient. This has the dual ports and it comes with, well, it comes with this piece in the pipes. This is extra and I'm gonna show you how I have it installed. And okay, essentially these two have to hook on. It comes with two more hoses. And then I made this and cut this to fit one of my windows. Also to keep bugs and other critters from getting in the tubes when I'm not using it. You can see these little, I'm trying to make it so you can see it. There you go, see it? So what I actually used is it was cheaper just to buy two strainers. And then I cut the material from the strainers to fit over them to keep bugs from uh, getting in this. They're not gonna be able to climb through here when hot air is coming out, but the other one maybe, or if it's off at night and I leave the window open. So I custom made this to fit in the RV multiple windows, but I'll just show you what it looks like. Because I feel it's important to show what the actual assembled piece looks like. Okay, so now we are looking at a portable air conditioner that looks something like this. Let me get behind it. That looks like this. That's what it actually looks like inside my RV, which is still compact. Um, the battery situation, I mean, unless you're really trying to save your batteries, I'm just gonna plug it into my normal outlet and run it off my lithium batteries and the solar panels of my RV. So with that, let me bring this inside and show you how it looks inside. All right, and there she is, folks, fully installed here, uh, currently sitting on part of my dinette. And uh, all I would need to do is grab a bungee from underneath the table, wrap it to the handle, and go back down for transport. But I probably won't be using it while I'm driving due to the fact that it needs to be plugged outside. So that custom piece that I fit, you can see it curves along the window just perfectly. And then uh, all you do is open the window a little bit. We'll go outside and I'll show you what it looks like on the outside. I originally chose to have the white side of the board to the out, but it just didn't look good because this isn't pure white. So I went with the black side, which kind of matches the, matches the uh, tint here. And uh, that's what it looks like. Again, there's going to be no bugs getting in there at night. I do have to pull it out of the window in order to close the window. And then I have a little rod to secure the window in place while I'm using the air conditioner. But from the outside, you really can't even tell that much. If I really wanted to, I could even get some black spray paint and paint part of the ductwork out here and the actual vent there, which I might later on, I don't know yet. One thing I will remind you is that be mindful of which side goes up and down. On this unit, this side, this side is the hot air exhaust. So this side, you want to be high. You want the cold intake to be lower because heat rises. So make sure that you have it in this configuration that you see here, not the other way around with the heat on the bottom. And then this guy can just twist around and face wherever I want, right here in the chair usually. So um, right now you can see I've unplugged the battery. I've just got the power cord plugged directly in. We've got it plugged into our little watt meter right here where it's drawing for some reason four watts of ghost watts there, <laughs> not even turned on. Well, that's not true. We do have the red light on there. So something's on here. Uh, let's see, other things we need to talk about. So 
the big question everybody's going to ask, Eric, how much space will it actually cool? Well, according to Zero Breeze, this is meant to cool a space that is up to 40 square feet. 40 square foot space, which would be pretty much most, most cars, SUVs, vans, maybe even some of the Sprinter vans and stuff like that. But an RV... Probably not. I mean, if you measure the length of my RV, 24 feet by 8 feet wide, no, that's just under 200 square feet. But we're not really cooling 200 square feet because we've got cupboards and we've got the fridge that pops out. We've got this countertop here and stuff like that. As you can see, I've closed the back curtain right now to the bedroom. So really what we're doing is we're changing a few things. I've also got the curtain behind you across the cab over, and then right behind the uh, driver's area here. And the bathroom door's closed. Boy, it's getting hot. I gotta turn that on here. So let's see where we're at now. We're still eight feet across here, but when you get to the fridge, it's obviously not eight feet anymore. It's four and a half feet. So eight feet for those three feet, and then four feet for the last five feet. I'm not, I'm not good at all this measuring, but let's see how, how from the back of the camera all the way to the curtain is 10 feet. So 10 feet by, what should we call this? We got eight there, we got four and a half here. Let's just round it to the middle and say six. So 10 foot by six foot is what we're trying to cool, which is 60 square feet. And this is rated for 40, so we're over that. But in hindsight, even if it doesn't maintain a perfectly cold temperature year round, since we can adjust that and kind of spot AC while we're sitting here, you know. So I'm gonna sit here at the computer and I'm gonna aim this, you know, I'm gonna bring it all the way over to me, aim it right at me or on me or on the bottom of the table here while I'm on the laptop to feel that. It's gonna feel cooler than it really is because it's, it's literally spot cooling me right now. It's not, I don't, it's, it might not be cold there or back there or something, but right here it's going to be nice and chilly. And I do need to get some shades for right here too to keep the sun out. But uh, let's do a test. All right, so I got the watt meter here. Can you guys see that? Yeah, 4.2 watts, 3.3. All right, so I'll be showing you this as we go through the process here, but let's go ahead and turn it on. I want to turn it on to the highest, which will be the rocket. It starts on rocket, turn it all the way up, cooling on rocket. And as it fires up, we're going to, okay, so 17 watts already. Don't know if you can hear it also just starting to warm up even more. There's 25 watts. Remember that my rooftop AC, my 13,500 uh, AC that's on the roof there runs on 1,300 watts. 1,300 watts. Just trying to get it to focus. There we go. And the glare out of the way. Sorry about that. 67 watts, 71 watts. But while it's revving up there, oh gosh, oh, it feels so nice, it feels so nice. This won't even set off the uh, fans on my inverter, it, it won't. All right, we're up to 103 watts, 100, 104, 105, no, it's still climbing. Very, very slowly, but not 1,300 watts. So far, 100 and, 110 watts, and it's still ramping up. What do you think of that, Opie, right there? Oh, how does that feel? Oh, you like, that's gonna be your new spot, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you like that one? <laughs> I'm just gonna keep checking this, 121 watts now. How far will she go? Oh, I missed it. It went up to 134 and now it's dropping. It's still on rocket, but now it's down to 119 and continuing to drop down. So it hit that desired temperature that it was trying to get to on rocket and now you can switch it to cool. Cool, right there. Now let me let the, let the regular cool catch up and we'll see how much that runs on just regular cool now that we're maintained. All right, 75 watts. Let's scroll down and get the amps. I just want you guys to see that. Less than one amp, 0.76 amps. Oh, it's still going up a little bit. But yeah, less than one amp, guys, for this air conditioner. 
So I've been testing this thing out for a good week now, guys, and getting ready to make this video, but I wanted to really get some numbers and show you everything because I wanted it to look good. There is one thing that I forgot to show you, and that is because it's a real air conditioner, because it's actual air conditioner that removes moisture from the air, there's also a drain hose. You attach a drain hose right there, and I will show you what I've done, is put it down here into a bucket. Okay, and this bucket has quite a bit of water in it. Can you see that? Quite a bit of uh, dirty water there. And then I'll just empty this once a week or so on the road. Um, but that's something to consider. And then as far as transport, this comes out of the window, the window secures, and then I bungee this to the table right here. But the reason, I mean, it's so portable that this little thing I cut right here, it'll fit into the side window over in that chair. It'll fit into the bedroom window in there. I could put this on my bed and just cool me in there, close the blinds right there, and just cool a much smaller space all night long. We're only talking, what was it, 100 and 130 watts max? That's nothing when you have 500 lithium amp hours of battery storage overnight, and they're just going to recharge the next day when the sun comes out. So Zero Breeze has done something that is just going to be a game changer for a lot of people who don't like the heat in the summertime. I'm sorry Tara didn't pop up here. It's just kind of all opie today. That's okay. Yeah, I want to thank Zero Breeze for sending this out to me and the two extra batteries and the cables and everything. We are going to be enjoying a cooler summer this year with this unit right here. There are some links in the video description if you want to check it out for yourself. But yeah, thanks again, Zero Breeze. And we will see you back to our regularly scheduled programming tomorrow from the road. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.